Welcome back, my retro gaming friends. Today we're going to dive into the world of Nintendo 64 emulation using RetroArch. We'll explore everything from selecting the best emulator core, to configuring it, and even enhancing the graphics for that authentic retro gaming experience. Let's jump right in. Before beginning the tutorial, I want to mention that I've covered the fundamental aspects of RetroArch in previous videos. If you're not sure how to install RetroArch, add games, or configure controls, check out our tutorial playlist. The link is in the description. Let's begin setting up Nintendo 64 emulation by opening RetroArch. In the main menu, we want to navigate to the online updater and select Core Downloader. Look for the Nintendo 64 entries in this list and the core we want is the Mupin 64 Plus Dash Next Core. Once you find it, go ahead and download it. And by the way, if you're interested in knowing a bit more about the emulators available, you can press the select button on your controller to bring up an information box. Now let's head back to the main menu and then into settings and choose drivers. Under video, opt for the Vulkan driver, which will provide better performance and compatibility in most cases. If you only want to use Vulkan for the N64 core and not your other RetroArch cores, you'll need to change this setting with an N64 game open and then save a core override config file. The process to add games has been greatly refined in newer versions of RetroArch. In the main menu, go to Import, Content, Scan Directory, and navigate to the location of your N64 ROM directory, and then scan it. You should end up with a Nintendo 64 menu entry that contains your game collection. At this point, let's quit RetroArch and reopen it to capture the changes we've made. Back in RetroArch, open an N64 game from the new N64 menu. When prompted, run it using the Mupin64 core. After the game loads, open the Quick menu and proceed to Core Options. Here we'll fine-tune emulation settings and surprisingly there's not much that needs to be tinkered with. We'll change both the RDP and RSP plugins to parallel. This option provides better emulation accuracy. However, it does require a more robust system. So if you find your rig struggling, you can switch back to Glide N64 and HLE respectively. Our focus will be on parallel, but the remainder of the settings we'll cover have similar implementations in the Glide plugin as well. Now, open the Parallel RDP options and set the upscaling factor to 4x. This increases the native N64 resolution from 320 by 240 to a more modern 1280 by 960. This change will take effect after restarting RetroArch, so close the application and then reopen it with your N64 game and we can see the improvements. Now if you're satisfied with playing your N64 classics in RetroArch at a higher resolution, you're all set. You're good to go right now. However, if you want to take things to the next level with a touch of nostalgia, we can use the fantastic Mega Bezel CRT Shader Pack from Hyperspace Madness. Let me show you how. We first want to ensure that we have the latest shaders by going to the RetroArch main menu, the online updater, and then select update slang shaders. After the update is finished, we can exit RetroArch. We're going to pair the Mega Bezel shaders with console specific artwork from Duimon, who is another fantastic developer in the retro gaming community. You can find the latest version on their GitHub page, and the link will be in the description below. After you've downloaded Dewey Mon's Mega Bezel Pack, 
Open your RetroArch shaders directory, create a new subfolder in here, call it mega underscore bezel underscore packs, and then open the Duimon zip file and drag its contents into this newly created folder. Next, open an N64 game in RetroArch and enter the quick menu. Navigate to shaders and turn video shaders on. Now we'll go to load, mega bezel packs, the Duimon mega bezel folder, then presets, and I'm going to use the advanced folder presets, but if you find that they're too much for your system, you can try one of the other preset folders here. Now I'll find the Nintendo 64 preset folder, and in here I'm going to choose the custom bezel 001 shader. Now this is the bezel I prefer, but feel free to try any of the other ones available to see if there's one you like better. When you select it, there may be a bit of a delay before it loads, so just be patient. After it's finished loading, and if you want to apply this shader to every Nintendo 64 game, go to Save, and then Save Core Preset. If the sides of the bezel are missing, then go to the RetroArch main menu, into Settings, Video, Scaling, and change the aspect to full. So after we do this, I feel like our games are starting to look pretty good, at least as good as an N64 game can look. But if you're wanting to get even more of an authentic retro feel, you can go back into the core options, the parallel RDP options menu, go down to down sampling factor and change it to 1 4th. This will lower the output resolution and make the scan line effect of the shader more prominent. Now one more thing to be aware of, in some games you might notice that the image doesn't fill the screen. So in order to fix this, uh, the way that I use is to go back into shaders and then shader parameters, go down to the cropping core image area and you can adjust these settings within here until you're satisfied with the image size. Uh, once again after you're done make sure to save a game shader preset so that it remembers these crop settings for that specific game. Before we wrap up here's a video montage for your viewing pleasure.
What makes a video game's art style appealing is certainly a subjective matter. But the general consensus is that the N64's graphics have not aged well, with its blocky polygons, low-res, muddy textures, and heavy use of fog. And yet, using emulation and what it makes possible, such as higher resolutions and CRT shaders, we're able to combine the retro feel with a bit of a modern touch that almost restores these gems to their original 1990s luster. In my opinion, this is the best way to emulate these 64-bit classics. I hope you enjoy them too, and until next time, happy gaming, my friends.